I make that motion uh, with pleasure. Second. Second. Yes. 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 No. So moved. Second. Yes. 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 I so move, Governor. Um, extremely uh, great choice. I want to thank you and the governor for putting uh, Mr. Kaleen um, in front of us today. He's got vast experience in the West and in the East, 22 years combined. Uh, and I thank you very much. I would second. like to second that motion coming from the glorious Golden West. He is a great nominee, yeah. great choice, and he'll do a great job. I guess I'll third that because um, I, 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 as I meet with everyone, he's exceptional and he has the age, he has the life experience, he has it all. I'm very pleased to vote yes. 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 You the point. Shabazz. So moved. Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. We may begin the roll call. Yeah, commutation. Oh. Council Shabazz. Yeah. We have discussion? We we can. We we have a motion and a second, yeah. Councillor. Okay. Um I um I went out to Bridgewater and um I met with him um uh, three hours and um I, I I can't say enough about this man. Fifty one years and um when you see what drugs can do and this is what it was all about. He went to Vietnam, he got involved in drugs, and that's what happened with the tragic the tragic incident that he was involved in. But in the 51 years, he has not only rehabilitated himself, but other people, and has been such a role model. But it was the best three hours I ever spent. But I do want to say one thing. I found in visiting prisons, because I have visited Norfolk with commutations and pardons, uh, there is a difference. And I'd like to report that. I, I'd like to look into why. When you go to Norfolk prison, it's like a community prison. When I met with um, the gentleman for a commutation at that time, he was in a sport shirt, sport pants, and, and shoes. When I go to Bridgewater, and I've gone there a few times, they're in prison uniforms, and there's all, this, all these instructions about you have to stand here, you have to do this. And I'm just wondering why there isn't a standard for all of them and um, I just thought that it was so much more comfortable in Norfolk than in Bridgewater. And I just wanted to note that. It seems to me it should be uniform. What do I know? But I just felt as someone that visits, uh, I noticed that. So I just wanted to report that, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, Councilor Ferreira. Uh, ju just for the record, um, I, I have mixed feelings about voting yes or no. Uh, this is a gentleman who did serve our country for one month in Vietnam, and I certainly appreciate that, uh, as well as 2.7 million other people that uh, went to Vietnam for us. Um, I know when you know this Commonwealth did away with the death penalty, we decided the 200 people who voted and the governor decided that life is the sentence you get for first degree murder. And if you commit murder with extreme atrocity or cruelty, premeditated, deliberate malice of forethought, 
you lied in wait and you kill somebody, you're there for life. And that's exactly what he did. He took not one, but two lives within three feet, shot them point blank. People that say, I'm not for the death penalty, usually follow that by saying, but I want them to go to jail for the rest of their life. And this has to be an extremely rare, extraordinary event for the governor to put before us that someone who has been a model prisoner and has done so much good in prison would have the chance of being let out. Um, and I can say for the record that if one family member reached out to me or reached out to anyone saying that they didn't want this to happen, I would not vote for it today. But the family has been silent. Uh, the district attorney has been silent. And after 51 years of great service and being um, a mentor to so many and setting the standard extremely high for others that will come before us in the future, uh, those are the reasons why I can vote for him today. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. <clears throat> okay. We have a motion. We have a second. We may begin the roll call. Yes. You. Yes. 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 I recognize Councilor Jubinville yeah. for a motion to record advice and consent to pardon John Austin. Uh, I make that motion uh, with pleasure. Second. Excellent. Okay, we may begin the roll call. Yes. 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 I recognize Councilor Duff for a motion to record advice and consent to pardon Philip E. Hagar Jr. So move, Governor. Second. There's a motion and a second. We may begin the roll call. Yes. 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 I'm Picallo. Yes. 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 I have to say this, but can you speak up a little louder, Valerie? Yeah, yeah it's right. it's a bigger room than she doesn't have a mic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> That's why. That's why. Yeah. Okay. I recognize Council Ionella for a motion to record advice and consent to pardon Edmund W. Mulville okay. Jr. Uh, so moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. We may begin the roll call. Kennedy? Yes. 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 All right. And following yesterday's hearing, it's apparent that there are not sufficient votes from the governor's council to support a, bar a pardon for the emeralds. Therefore, the governor is withdrawing his pardon petition. <laughs> So be Lieutenant Governor, that will conclude so be our Lieutenant statement. Governor, statement okay. statement allowed. <laughs> okay, uh, I I want to say that. Um, I, I'm before, going to allow, uh, I'm going to allow me, the counselor to make a uh, statement. Excuse me, thank you, counselor. Um, I want to report that I was verbally assaulted by the ambulant ambulant uh, supporters after the hearing. One man yelled at me. He's going to work hard to see that I am never elected, and said I was crazy. I think that this is very unauthorized. Uh, and the other thing is, um, I want to say is that the counselors were asked today to vote for a pardon, and now it's not coming. Tukey, in a letter to the governor, says he cannot wear shorts because of the bracelet on his ankle. The child victims live forever with the memories of the physical and mental pain the sexual assaults and threats by Tukey, they're never forgotten. They live a life sentence, but Tukey is home, he can travel, he takes care of his grandchildren, and he has a pretty good life. Attorney Salton, speaking for the Arsenal, spoke with untrue statements. He was never there when the case in the court took place. These children live a life sentence. They're in their 40s now but Tukey believes he deserves a pardon. Attorney Salton spoke for the Arsenal's untrue statements. 
He was never there when the case in the court took place. He stated that they used every means to coerce the children to make their statements. Not true. The lawyer was not on the case. Attorney Hardin has been on the case for over 38 years from the beginning with the, with the victims. He had the court records, and he gave us all the case from 38 years to now. The other attorney gave us undocumented things. He even said there was a lie detector that took, he took. And um, it, it's not permissible, but then when he went to court, at the, uh, Tukey was going to take a lie detector test, and then they didn't do it. The testimony for victims and parents was so painful to listen to. A grandmother who adopted the children of her daughter who was a victim who could not take care of her children. A victim talked about her experience still breaking up to give her testimony how brave they were to come before us. And, and you know, the portion of the hearing that was so lacking, the physical evidence of the children. And each of these children were interviewed separately and they were told, and the parents were told not to question them. And this all began with one child, one little girl telling her mother what happened there. And she told the police and that was it. All the children were interviewed separately, and yet so many told the same story, especially about the camera with Cheryl and Tukey. And they talked about the camera with the red light, and, and this is the old days, and the picture would come out. And this was pictures, and it, it's hot, I can't even talk about the graphics of it, of, um, of, of what they, they were, they had taken their clothes off, and they were doing things with Tukey, and, um, unmentionable, and that was all. That's child pornography. And in those days, child pornography had to be mailed, and we didn't have digital. The big mistake was we don't have the pictures because the police didn't go into Felsacre till after the, the family were arrested three weeks later. So that's where it goes. But I mean, these people live it every day. And when you think of that four-year-old boy who was probably 44 now, and and uh, and he was and Tuki was having sex with him, and he told him, "You tell your mother and father, I'll kill them both." He told his mother and father, and four months later, his father was killed in a motorcycle accident. He thought it was because he told, and they had he, he had years years of going to psychiatrists for it because he felt that. Tukey killed his father, and now he's going to kill his mother. I could go on with so many others, but that was what was absent. Mm -hmm. But to listen to the testimony of Attorney Sultan was so painful to me. My friend's daughter was sexually assaulted. She's 41 years old. They didn't come. They don't want them to be in the media. They've gone through enough. But when I see a victim before us, and, and she had someone beside her to give her a little confidence, this is wrong. And to pull a pardon, I, that's unacceptable. The other thing is, the whole thing about this coming out a few weeks before the end of the term of the governor is unacceptable. In 2015, the governor was asked by his good friend, Barbara Anderson, that she was dying. And would he pardon her good friend, Tukey? And so, that's what it's about. It's not about the, this administration investigating the truth, the truth of this and all the children that are adults now, how many drug addicted, how many lives are ruined. No, they didn't get into that. It was a promise to Barbara Anderson. So that's what it was. This was based on a friendship. Pardons shouldn't be based on political friendships. And I'm here to say that I, um, I, I would hope, and I had no idea, because I do my own homework, I don't poll a council, I would hope that we would have had the majority of the council. I don't know how the governor gets his information. I don't have the information from the councils how they would vote, but I have faith, and I, I just hoped that we would resend this. So um, this isn't any good day for any of us, and not for the... And the thing is, the way this was brought up, 
The governor never notified the victims. They heard on the news. They heard on the news. No DA, no one. Until this day, Scott Hasbarger, who was attorney general, district attorney, said this week they were guilty and it was everything was proper. They had more hearings and, and it went on for many years. And so does Tom Riley say the same thing. And he recently uh, gave us a statement. They were guilty and everything was done properly and they, they don't deserve a pardon. And so does Scott Hashberger say that. So I go on facts. I don't go on uh, what this attorney said. And so um, I know I'm going on about this, but I've lived this and I was ready to vote no when it came up to Governor Swift, but she voted no and it didn't come before us. But when my friend told me the story about his daughter coming home with blood in her pants, no, no, this is real. This is real and it happened. And, uh, and uh, um, it really breaks my heart that, you know, that took you can't wear shorts. Thank you. Okay, that concludes our assembly today. Thank you.